Number one, what is your name, please? My name is John Corcoran. Number two. My name is John Corcoran. Number three. My name is John Corcoran. Okay, panel, it's up to you to locate the real John Corcoran, and here is his story. Please read along with me on the affidavit. I, John Corcoran, lived with a secret for over 40 years. I was a functional illiterate. Despite the fact that I could not read or write, I graduated from college, became a teacher, and a self-made millionaire. I could not read menus, street signs, business contracts, or even write a simple note to my wife. My children enjoyed what they thought was my reading of fairy tales. But only my wife knew I was making them up. The more successful I became in business life, the harder it became for me to ask for help. Finally, I got the courage to go to an adult learning center and learn to read and write. I now travel all over the country, lecturing on behalf of our nation's literacy program. And I'm proud to say that I've received the National Literacy Award along with First Lady Barbara Bush. But I'm even more proud that I can read this affidavit and I can sign it. John Corcoran. Welcome to Destin's, and let's start the questioning with Morton Downey, Jr. Number three, what did you teach when you graduated from college? Uh, mathematics and sociology. Number two, what did you make your money from? Real estate. Number one, how did you understand the real estate contracts? Hired a lawyer. Number one, you trusted the lawyer. I didn't say that. <laughs> ah, great. Number one, you don't have to read and write to know that answer, right? Num number, oh. Who's writing number one script? Okay, Dorothy, what would you like? Number two, how did this happen? That you got through the first grade without there are one million people that graduate from our high schools last year that could not read past the eighth grade level. I just passed through the system. And what does the term functional number two, functional illiterate mean? Able to still function, but so you could read something? Number two? Oh, I'm sorry. Number two, uh, functional just means to function, to cope. No, illiterate is an illiterate cannot read or write. Mm. Tom, number three, was there any part of you that enjoyed fooling people for a certain amount of time? No, it's a, a very shameful situation and you feel ashamed. You feel, you feel like a dummy because you're always put in the dumb class. Number three, again, how did you get through college without being able to read? I elected more classes than I was going to take, selected the classes that didn't require written homework, and I cheated. <laughs> That's honest. Number one, what percentage of our country is functionally illiterate? There are about 20 million functional illiterates. Uh, the population, I guess that would be about 20 percent. No, 8 percent. All right. Pity. Thank you. Number one, how long did it take you to learn to read and write when you started? I understood the system within about three months, and after that, it was just work and it didn't take that long. Thank you. Number two, did your parents read and write? Yes. And how come they let you get through? Number three, how did they let you get through school without learning to read and write? They didn't know that I couldn't read and write. How did you fool them? The same way I fooled everybody else. Number one, why did you think it was more important to fool people than to learn how to read and write? Because I had to survive. But number two, wouldn't it have been better to learn instead of having all this kind of chicanery and no, number two? No, it wasn't that easy. I mean, simple to uh, explain. Thank you. Number one, where did... It's an amazing story, and it's time up, of course, panel, to vote now for either number one, number two, or number three. That team of challengers will receive $500 for each incorrect vote, with a guarantee of $1,000, and if the panel is fooled completely, the team will receive $3,000. And panel, are you ready to cast your ballots? We'll start with Morton. Well, I looked at number one, and uh, he looks like, he, rather than a real estate uh, dealer, he may very well have made his money selling used cars. Uh, number, two is, <laughs> number two is very believable. Number three seems like a very sincere, kind, and honest human being who really wanted to succeed in this life and has. And number three, I'm proud to vote for you. All right. Okay. Dorothy, what do you think? 
I also like number three's answers very, very much. Um, number one, I thought, uh, uh, I think, wasn't quite accurate about his figures. So I ended up voting for number two because there's something about the way he looks at me which makes me, I would believe it if he told me he could read and write and he couldn't. So I voted for him. Tom. I just always thought it was number three because he has this kind of confidence it would seem to be able to get through those situations and not let people be on to him. Okay, and Kitty, your thoughts? Well, they're all wonderful. There's no doubt about it. Number three seems like a very interesting scholar, teacher, professor. Uh, number one seems like a sharp businessman. He doesn't trust lawyers. And uh, <laughs> I voted for number two. Hmm, interesting. Now, the votes are all in, as you can see. No votes for number one, two for number two, and two votes for number three. Let's find out who the real champion of literacy is. Will the real John Corcoran please stand up? Yeah. And here is John Corcoran receiving his literacy award from President and Barbara Bush. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. John, after so many years, what was that moment that made you decide you had to admit your problem and learn to read and write? That moment was, uh, happened to me every day. I always wanted to learn how to read and write, and I was finally invited to learn how to read and write. And this nation is finally becoming aware of how many people in this country that cannot read and write, and all they have to do is be taught. And where should they go? They, they can go to public libraries, for one, in California. And the adult learning centers in their cities? Yes. Okay, congratulations, Thank John, for coming much. out and being so honest. <laughs> well, let's find out who our imposters really are. Number one, your name and real job, please. My name is B. Joe Thompson, and I'm a lawyer, Chapter 11 special. <laughs> Number three, your name and your real profession. Uh, my name is Uncle Butch Ibbon, and I'm a square dance caller. <laughs> <laughs> but he calls all the dancers from memory. Well, there were two incorrect votes at $500 a vote, so your team will receive $1,000. And thank you very much for being here today on To Tell the Truth. We've added something new on To Tell the Truth. It's called One on One, and we'll be back to play it with someone from our studio audience after this. Our dentist gave us a reason to...